teams come out, led uh, by the referee Duncan Kelly, and thereby hangs a tail. The 98th Kamenak Cup final, very tasty it would appear to be. The Lukaba Old Firm in action for the first time ever in these particular circumstances, and uh, their respective cup final records down through the years, uncannily similar. Five appearances each, one victory apiece. Kilmally in 64 in this very town of Fort William and Fort William in 92 at Old Annie's Land in Glasgow, the so-called Sunshine Final, uh, from which game there are a few survivors on the field this afternoon. How important do you think these guys will be, Hugh Dan? Ian, I think uh, the experience of the Fort William team is absolutely crucial at the start of this game. They've got some guys here who are playing in their fifth Kamenach Cup final. All Fort William's tracks record is boiled into the last five years. Kilmally, on the other hand, their only connection is perhaps Donald Lamont, who's playing at full forward, that his father played in the 1969 final. They don't know what this is going to be like. That could count in their favour if they treat it in the right way. All right, we'll have a look at uh, the teams and we'll pick out a few for you. Kilmally under John Morrison and... Uh, the exotically nicknamed uh, Neil McNiven in goal. Bochy McNiven to you. <laughs> Splendid, Bochy McNiven. He'll be in action today, all right. There's no doubt about that. But the overriding impression one has looking at that team, uh, I know that John Stewart's been picked out by Donny, number 11, as a serious uh, danger man. But there's a lot of youth on that side. A lot of youth in the half-back line, McDonald, Stoddart and Carmichael. They are very young, very inexperienced at one level, but as we saw Ian in the semi-final against Kyles, very committed. Up front, Donald Lamond will hold the ball up for three whippets in Stewart, Roger and Massey. <laughs> three whippets indeed. Well, less of the whippets uh, in this side, but lots and lots of experience. I suppose in a way you could say it's the young bucks against the old bodocks. And these are the old bodocks. There's a, there's a good mixture, mixture uh, here, Ian, in the team. You've got people like James Clark, Victor Smith, Drew McNeil. Remember Scott McNeil in goal, too, a crucial man there who's played in, in the cup finals for different teams. Uh, the Robertson brothers, very strong in the middle. Up front, I think uh, the key player could be Gordon McKinnon because of his pace on this slippery surface today. The man with the ball will have all the advantages. It's not going to be a good day for defenders. Fort William is the, the epicentre of the Shin world today and uh, by way of demonstrating that the Minister for Sport is here Patricia Ferguson meeting the team she's uh, gone through the Comalley side and she'll be coming and uh, talking with Fort William there we are just a, a bit of a breeze we need a, a good going hurricane to blow these clouds away but a decent crowd here and a lot of interest in, in Fort William as we've said we couldn't make it up with all the Fort William connections, it has all conspired to provide a fascinating backdrop to what uh, is sure to be a magnificent game, despite the poor conditions. These boys are going to play their hearts out today. And we can tell you that there are certain members of the Fort William committee watching this game out in Santa Ponza in Mallorca because uh, the dates got mixed up, the holidays got mixed up, and I dare say the weather's rather better out there. I would say they'd be in uh, slightly better conditions. There you are. I hope, I hope they're watching and I hope they've got that. In Santa Ponza, they'll be having another Cuba Libre and looking at the blazing <laughs> sunshine. Well, here it's old Clays and Parrish, but what a game in prospect. Absolutely fascinating. And the throw up ready to go, the game ready to roll. And although Fort William have the experience, there is just a little feeling that this could be very tight indeed. Up goes the ball and away goes the game. 90 minutes and Scott Roger on the burst, number 10 through right away with a bit of acceleration and flair. Gary Ennis looks for Victor Smith. He's closed down, a blast on the whistle, a loud blast on the whistle. And Victor Smith was a a son of this parish, I suppose we could say about that about them all, Hugh Dan. Well, I think Victor Smith's probably got the shortest walk of all. His house is only about, his mother's house is only about 100 yards from the pitch area. Right. Yeah. So Fort William with a free hit. Drew McNeil with long, big and unavailing, straight through. Yeah, Drew McNeil, who, who said, I thought in his introduction, <laughs> something awfully funny. He said uh, he, was, he was in charge or had something to do with the best hotel in Inverness. Yeah, I think people should realise that that's uh, at the invitation of Her Majesty only. <laughs> Drew McNeil, prison officer in uh, Inverness. 
John McLeod trying to set up and James Clark on the turn trying to get a shot at goal he does but it goes past there's the massive frame of James Clark playing up front I think you'd want to say something about him well, this was uh, exactly what we'd expect of James Clark to hold the ball up. It all came from a poor hit out. He'll be wanting to have done much better with that. Pushes it up there. Good running from uh, Neil McPhee. Oh, <laughs> one cam and goes. Not an unusual sight in this part of the world. Gary Ennis and a blatant push from McNichol. On the run, John McLeod, he's held on to it. Set it up for Clark on the tongue. They're all trying to turn it and Victor Smith waits. And what's he doing up there? Drew, oh, what a fantastic strike from Drew McNeil. My word, what a chance. That was an amazing chance from Drew McNeil. Well, Drew McNeil might have not have been the ideal person to have this shot, but we look at it here, that's off the bar. That's crashed right back off the bar. If you look at it, it's a dip right at the last second, smashes off the bar and back into play. Jumping in midfield was Drew McNeil and Alec McNichol. That was Scott Roger. And a deflection for uh, a shy in the far side. Scott Roger trying to make amends. Yeah, Alec McNichol. Knocks it in. Scott Roger. And they're, they're jousting and a chance going in here. Oh, and that's cleared away. That was that was an opportunity. Scott McNeil had to look lively. Well, this was Scott Roger eventually fired it in. That's actually a good save by Scott McNeil. He wouldn't have seen that to the last minute. That's a good save. Fantastic save. John Stewart with the corner on the far side. It drops for Alec McNichol, who if it had fallen the other way, Drew McNeil leads out. Trying to find his man which he does and a bit of elbowing going on there from Neil McPhee number six Neil McPhee 19 years of age one uh, of the players big powerful boy coming through the Fort William system uh, just used his strength just a bit much there the arm you see above the shoulder shoulder to shoulder fine anything else is a foul Alec McNichol knocks it in turning Gary Ennis does well Looking in midfield for uh, Gordon McKinnon and Victor Smith. Nice bit of deception. I don't know if it was altogether intentional, but uh, John McLeod asked a lot of James Clark. Too much. The other, oh, maybe not too much. He does so well. He's still going. James Clark. For a big man, he can do all sorts of wonderful things with reach. Fantastic strength, Ian, and he's also got one of the longest cannons in the game, one of the longest sticks to play there. You'll see he's got tremendous wrist power. Gary Ennis taps it down. Return for Ennis. Just, Chiva was very casual with that. The keeper is Neil McKinnon, Bochy by nickname, and quite yeah. casual. You'd be looking for him to deal with this just a bit quicker. He's, it looks as if he knew what he was doing there. Gets away to safety over the line. John McLeod with the corner. Across it goes. Chances going a begging there, but not taken. There's no score here. We've played uh, 10 minutes. Kilmally nil, Fort William nil. The 98th Kamenach Cup final. And uh, a lot hanging on this game. Loud blast on the Duncan Kelly's whistle. And he isn't putting a foot wrong, Duncan Kelly. You were suggesting that he, he is here by merit and merit alone? Absolutely, Ian. And I think what he's doing is, is quite right in the first 10, 20 minutes here, stamping his authority on the game. Liam McIntyre, he asks for a lot of Drew McNeil. The referee is in no doubt that's a foul by Alec McNichol. Two veterans of the game in direct confrontation. Oh, that's a lovely bit of running from McLeod. Look at that. But James Clark, can he turn and hit? Oh, a save from Bocky and the chance. Oh, would you believe it? What? He can't believe it. What a chance there was. John McLeod and James Clark can't believe it. 
Well, there was some interesting bodywork in the sequence here. Watch McLeod driving in and watch what happens after that. James Clark fires the shot in. The ball bounces out. Look at the Fort William player taken out there and over the bar. How on earth did that not go in, Ian? It should certainly have gone in. Fort William know it. What an opportunity was missed. That's good play from Scott Roger. And we haven't seen the blue jerseys down here in some time. Liam McIntyre tracking back. Puts it up the line, and uh, Young McPhee does very well. Oh, a lovely touch from Scott Roger. That's good play from Kilmali, very nice. And Lamont and Adam Robertson in fierce jousting competition. The best of three falls is uh, being conducted between these two. Might have been the best of three falls, Ian, but there'll be no submission here, I tell you. Just look at this. <laughs> There's only one way to stop him, really, isn't there? <laughs> Well, Adam Robertson has been on the go for some time. <laughs> uh, as He's not going to stop now. <laughs> no change there then. So, chance for Komali trying to get through. Scott Roger trying to get on the end of that. A chance for Alec McNichol. Ooh, he wasn't far away with that. Alec McNichol, Totti as he's known throughout the game. He had a real chance there for Scott Roger. Clicks it across. It broke for and he smashed it up. Oh. oh, Fraser Massey. Well, the, this is two great efforts here from Kamali. John Stewart, good ball, that little flick in. Breaks kindly to Scott Roger eventually, gets it across. For William making a hash of the defence here, falls kindly to Massey, and that's just past, that's inches past. So it's one each in the game, raging, raging on and a goal! A goal for Donald Lamont, for Kilmali. Terrific pressure over the last few moments. 19 minutes gone, a fantastic goal for Kilmali. They lead 1-0. And he's pleased. How did it happen? Well, this is the first time Kilmali have really pressured the Fort William. Great run, but that was a great run by John Stewart. What a finish from Donald Lamont. I bet his father's proud of that one. Look at this. Bang! You no will mistake. not see a finer strike or a cleaner finish than that. Game on. Wow. So Fort William have had all the pressure. And the one goal has been scored by Kilmali. As the heavens open, there is a cascade of rain and it doesn't matter to the Kilmali supporters. They're ecstatic. Another blast and the whistle. It's just a bit scrappy and you know the, there's no rhythm to the play really and, and we're beginning to get a couple of injuries now. The 50-50 the tackles are, are getting a bit more rough. This is the incident earlier on there and you see, well it's Ooh. just the, this previous one here, just um, an accidental smack in the mouth I think there for McNichol. He's going to feel that for a while yeah. and he's got to go off. That's Alec McNichol. Blood injury and of course there are no blood substitutions at the moment in Shinty so Kilmali will be down while he's off. So that's another midfield player they're missing for the minute. So for William, we'll look to capitalise on that. Donald Lamont setting up nicely. Massey trying to come in on the action. Ooh, that ran right through Levin to Gary Ennis, who's helped it on its way and up into the danger area. It's McNichol and Clark striving and striving. Ooh. Oh, has a goal been given? The goal has been given. It has been given, and it is that man. Well, it, this but pro probably, I think, was down as a goalkeeping error at the end of the day. We'll need to see it again. Great work by James Clark. Look at the touch. Look at the touch for a big man. Gets it in. McNichol stops it. That's really unfortunate. It's a rebound. It's very, very unfortunate. Look at this. He Great knocks save. it in himself. That's a tragedy for, for the keeper here, but that's great work by James Clark. Look at the way he fought for that. Great save initially, and it just drops over the line. Levin drives through. Donald Lamont. Outpaced by Duncan Roger. 
but a nice ball for McPhee. Victor Smith scurries away. Good play from Levin. Uh, the whistle goes for half time. And a marvellous, marvellous first half. Donald Lamont scored for Kilmally first, number 12. There he is. The equaliser from another big fellow, James Clark of Fort William. The score at half time here at Anaird. Kilmally 1, Fort William 1. Second half, almost ready to go. Uh, the weather pretty much as was. Maybe not quite so heavy, but we're just getting heavy, heavy showers of rain. And an intriguing second half. What about the wind, Hugh Dan? It's a bit brighter as well, Ian. The wind's still uh, left to right as we look at it. That means that Kilmally have the wind. And I was speaking to Donald Lamont, uh, Donny Lamont's father there at halftime, and he said, the wind's changed, we've got it. Yes, and it could be important. But uh, good to hear young John uh, McPhee. Pretty optimistic about things considering uh, his has been a personal loss having to leave the field Victor Smith would give a lot to be in the winning side he was there in 1992 at the Annie's Land Cup final but there's a chance immediately for a strike from Clark and we'll see a few of these and Victor Smith and that falls but uh, fortunately for the defence it was Ian Robertson running Big ball from Gary Ennis, that's dangerous, and it's beautifully saved. It's beautifully knocked out, I think it was Ewan Stoddart. Good play, Victor Smith turns his man, turns McDonald. Just overhit that. Gordon McKinnon trying to get there on the turn, and uh, McNiven had to scramble. Good stop, that was a good stop. This is a difficult shot to deal with. Look at the tight angle here. He's really got no room for error there, just about stood in it, and then he's got to get it out of play. And legal to use the feet in that instance. As long as his feet are stopped solid, he can't kick the ball in there or it's a penalty. McLeod. For Clark. Come on, James is the cry. James trying to turn and hit. I think we can confirm the rain is off as this one comes in for James Clark and that could make a difference. Good turn by Clark. He's, he's pretty good at this kind of thing, but it's a really tight angle that. No danger there for Kilmally. Chance here. There's a big chance here. A terrific scramble going on. Oof. And really, that should have been in the back of the net. Well, there's a bit of a loss of concentration here. That's a great touch by Victor Smith. Good save. That's that's McNiven coming off his line. That's what we want to see him do to, to get the ball away. So he McLeod with the corner. You and Stoddart. Oh, he doesn't make a job of that. There's a chance here. Oh, Clark goes sprawling and sprackling into the D. <laughs> oh, good turn. Neil Robertson. Very nice indeed over there McLeod dangerous ball looking for uh, Victor Smith who nearly collides with the, the spectators Looking for McPhee Neil McPhee who's knocked it further in Clark Bundles his man down, McNichol, chance for James Clark, can he hit it? No, he can't. And Kamichael, and another chance, and a save, and another chance. And the referee, the goal judge has a flag up. Well, I think this goes down as a brilliant save. Watch this, it kicks up here, just from the shot, Victor Smith, up it went. That's a great save by McNiven. And the, the rule is there that the player can't be in the box before the ball look at this the ball is there now i'd say the ball is in it all depends on the player out of vision was he in the box before the ball he would have been offside no goal anyway well probably that's the best outcome because uh, these things are always contentious great save great save great hit great save top class shinty 
I know it's early days, Ian, but uh, McNiven's having a key role in this game, and I would have thought that the, the man of the match, uh, judges for the Albert Smith Memorial Medal, will be having a look at this guy. Yeah. I know he made a mistake. It, it appears to be a mistake from what we've seen of it, but he's had some great saves. He's kept his team in the game. Bochy is his nickname, Neil McNiven Bochy. Relatively newcomer to the goalkeeping art as well. Used to be a defender. Been more than capable defender too. And from uh, a 30 plus player to a teenager, that was Duncan Roger. He was well connected in the Shinty world, Hugh Dan. A nephew of the legendary Sunshine. Sunshine Roger. Brings back memories. Interesting connection there too. This guy's uncle, Sunshine Roger, has a son on the Kilmally bench. It all goes round in a circle, doesn't it? <laughs> There'll be a few circles before tonight squared <laughs> off as well. <laughs> yes, right. So the, the tempo is slackened, I imagine, momentarily. But uh, Duncan Roger knocks it in the field. That's good play. That's very nice play. And, and dangerous, but there was time for Neil McNiven. Gary Ennis, the skipper. Oh, he doesn't hit that at all. Doesn't collect that at all, Gary Ennis. Uh, it should be said that Gary Ennis earns his living in these parts through much of Scotland as a wonderful accordion player. He is a professional musician. Yeah, um, I don't know what would happen if he lost tonight, but uh, knowing Gary, I don't think it would make too much of a difference at the end of the evening. But um, There would be a few airs and laments, I think. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and the rest, but a wonderful musician. The game is on. Donald Lamont looking for support. Across there is Scott Roger. Oh, striding out Gary Ennis. Good play from Gary Ennis, that long raking stride. Carmichael trying to close him down, but still it's Gary Ennis. Oh, he whistles that cross. Here's a chance for all. Oh, what a goal that would have been. What a fantastic goal. Superb. That was superb play from this point on. This is a lung-bursting run by Gary Ennis. I don't know, he won't have energy for the accordion tonight after that lot, I tell you. Up it goes, and whack. Look at that as a volley. If that would have been goal of the season if that had gone in, for sure. Look at this. Goal of this the is century. a wonderful touch by Victor Smith. Doesn't let it drop. You wouldn't see a cricketer doing that. Six. Look at that. That's good. That was very, very pleasing to see. So, despite the conditions, and they have uh, lessened a little, abated, there is some lovely shinty being played. Adam Robertson with the big hit. In front of the stand, Gordon McKinnon turns it further downfield. And Clark and McNichol once again. Clark goes in. Clark, can he hold it? Can he hit it? They're trying to block him always. In no support. Ewan Stoddart, it was finally who intervened. And oh, that was Victor Smith with a snapshot again. Scott Roger. Yeah, well, he was restrained by Duncan Roger. Neil Roberts for Victor Smith. Down the line. This is good. Quick boy, Gordon McKinnon. Puts it across goal. Oh, James Clark, will it fall for... Oh, well, it fell for him, but he really had to stretch and use his reach. Just out of reach at the end of the day. Good pressure from the forward. That was a great ball down the wing to Gordon McKinnon. He did the right thing here. Flicked it inside, running on. Clark again, using his weight. And then he just looked at a loose stick there, kicking up in the air, getting in the way. Ah, oh, yes, we have movement. We have David Nielsen coming on. This is David Nielsen, number 17. Alan McDonald going Alan off. Alan McDonald. Yep. Fort William certainly have had the second half pressure. Ian Robertson, the first uh, substitute for Kamali this afternoon. And jumping was uh, massy, but without success. And I think it is fair to say that Fort William are definitely trying to apply some serious pressure. Here's Victor Smith again. Can he turn? Can he hit? Oh! Oh! Oh, fantastic! 
What a low! Victor Smith is annoyed. Well, this guy is making his case as man of the match. This is a wonderful save. Good touch through there from Gary Ennis. What a great shot. He turns his man. Bang, up it goes. That might just have been the bar. Might have been the bar, but it's a corner, though. It's a corner. I think I think his cannon touched it. And that might just have been enough. Over there is John McLeod. More Fort William pressure. Coming straight across. Falls for Victor Smith again. Oh, another chance. A goal-mouth scrummage that was going on there is resolved by a lusty hit-out. And they're a bit relieved. But uh, the relief is momentary. Because here come Fort William again and James Clark again. All yellow and black power and pressure. Oh, Drew McNeil loses his cannon. Alec McNichol upfield. There's a chance here for Donald Lamont. He turns. Liam McIntyre with the clearance. And there is the, the occasion that that uh, yep. there's a lot of open space up there. Same pattern as the first half here. Yeah. All for William Pressure in the opening stages and then all of a sudden Kilmally get the ball in the break and they look perfectly capable of scoring. Ian Robertson oh. turns. Oh, that was that was very iffy. It was McNichol and McNeil and uh, the decision goes the way of the yellow and black and Drew McNeil gets the free hit. It's going to be taken by Duncan Roger who has... Uh, a marvellous hairstyle. Gary Innes turns and lopes, flicks for James Clark. He's looking for a man, trying to find, he just flicks it in for Victor Smith. Can Victor Smith get a free hit? The flag has gone up. The goal judge puts his flag up. Now that is uh, an interesting chap, isn't it? Mr. McCray of Kyle. Anyone wants to take a yacht into Kyle just now? Can't, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> he's the harbour master at Kyle. John McCray and a very good referee. Spotted a good bit of holding there. Look at Nielsen hand holding Victor Smith back. Good flag from the goal judge there. Free hit. Free hit. Must pass it though. Here we go. Here's the first one. Oh, what a great goal. And it's the captain. It's Gary Ennis, it is a cracking goal. All given away by the foul. Well, we spoke earlier of the five yards and the need to be in the space. Look at the way the space was created here. Opened up a gap, here comes Ennis, fires it. Absolutely no chance for the keeper there. That's a great finish. Gordy McKinnon, lovely touch, lovely pace on the ball. Just enough for Gary Ennis to get on top of it. The defender couldn't get his body in line. Great goal. Fantastic shot and strike, and Gary Innes is thrilled. Two one up, and a lot of work for Kilmally. Uh, and they've played three games this season already, and Fort William have nudged it, edged it each time. Yeah, there's never been much in it, Ian, and uh, we said before the game we thought this wouldn't be a runaway for either side. I think, you know, true to form, that's what's happening. That is what's happening. And the referee's not uh, happy with that shy. Suggesting it was over the shoulder. It has to be straight overhead when you make contact. And he's suggesting that Drew McNeil had... Uh, little bit of an advantage there taking it over the shoulder so Totti as Alec McNichol is known takes it knocks it in for Scott Roger oh that was that was nearly running through for Donald Lamont there was a bit of a scramble there Fort William happy to thump that away as they do and McNichol who is a master of that hit Look at McNeil, McNeil pushes it and the referee watches, gives the corner. There were claims there for handball. Well, if there are any medals for bravery, watch this. You've got a ball coming in, you take it on the chest. Bang, like that. Then you get your hand to it and there's mayhem follows. <laughs> That's brave goalkeeping, that. Scott McNeil. Scott McNeil, of course, has uh, had medals for bravery before. Yep, and due cause. Dangerous ball, chance. No, uh, the defence was too deep, but still, Gilmallow. Oh, 
Oh, well, it's a sort of... That, that was... Oh, Adam Robertson is the man for that. He likes to be in the middle of that, Adam. Well, what happened here was the Kilmally player goes to ground, you see. Takes the Fort William player out. So the first foul is where the Kilmally player goes down and takes the Fort William. He's given the advantage away there. That's just a bit of over-enthusiasm that has counted against Kilmally there. That have been better holding back. That's to McIntyre. Oh, little ground shinty being played. For Robertson, there's the big ball. Running, there's John McLeod. John McLeod, incidentally, worth uh, speculating about. Pushed up front, yep. often a defender. Yeah, worked his socks off, actually. He's himself and Clark have done exactly what they've done. I mean, nuisance value 100% to, to both of them. Uh, and then they've got uh, Victor Smith and um, Gordon McKinnon to do the running. You know, it's a, it's a lovely combination, actually, and it works. And uh, when we look at the Kamali touchline there, they're going to make another change to try and get back into the game. 2-1 down, of course, and they need to make a change. And... This looks Martin as if Duncan. it might be Martin yep. Duncan. Num number 16, Martin Duncan coming on. Let me just establish just who's going off here. A bit of confusion Not about clear who's, who's coming off. off. It's, uh, it's 14, Ian the Robertson. Yep. So they've substituted the substitute. Right, I think we're following this, but uh, that's an unusual, very unusual, that, Ian. Yes. That's how wet it is. Chances again falling, and Scott Roger. And, oh, well, Scott McNeil had to really watch that. He's tapping his brother on the shoulder there. Well done, brother. Watch this. This is a good effort. A lot of ricochets. That could have been, that was almost a handball. That's the defender, not the keeper getting it. That's uh, Drew McNeil dropping back there. Chance going on here. Scott Roger in the thick of it. Look at that. Oh, oh. yeah. Well, Drew, Drew McNeil, as befits a prison officer, is intervening. Adam is being calmed. Yeah. Well, it's all or nothing for Kamali now, and this is getting very, very competitive. Well, it's handbags, really. <laughs> Referee does wish a word. So, Kamali have a chance. What have they got? It's actually too tight for goal this Ian, it's too close. You'd want to be a wee bit further out, it's too close. How did they create space here? This is Alec McNichol over the ball. Can Kilmelly equalise? He'd love one back right now. We flick, too tight. Yes, scrambled, and another one. Still got it. They See what he did there, the difference Ian between what he did there was he didn't weight his hit properly. It was too short. Look at this. Whoa. Oh, one man hits another. Drew McNeil hits Neil Robertson. Neil Robertson's had a fair doing today. <laughs> yeah, but the worst part was that was his teammate that hit him. <laughs> it's all right when somebody else hits you. John Stewart. He, he might do better. 15 minutes away from the close. Clever, clever. And it was right, just rolled through. And Scott McNeil had to look pretty lively. Oh, that was nasty for Gary Ennis. He's OK. And again, Kilmally coming at the defence. Scott oh. McNeil, what a chance. Oh, there was a real opportunity as it finished. The whistle's gone. Oh, oh. oh for I think Adam that. Robertson. Well, we've got the goal judge on. We've got the goalkeeper. There's hands, there's points. Oh, dear, oh dear. I think there's a hand injury to Scott McNeil. He's not pleased. There are face. Adam Robertson well, offering calm and here caution. Here we go. Out he comes again, takes it nicely, follow through, down he goes, and then it's bodies everywhere, it. really. Uh, if Kelly can sort this out. It, well, it's impossible to see. Yeah. I think it was his own man. And, and uh, McNeil, well, Scott McNeil is advising the referee. What happened? It's... It, Adam Robertson is now incensed. Well, this is going to take a bit of sorting out here. Well, down he goes. Scott Rogers goes down. The balls, the whistle has gone at this point. Duncan Kelly has clearly stopped play there. Now, what what has happened here is that the Fort William player seems to have bumped into the goalkeeper. Then Stramash. Now, 
Here we have the goalkeeper and the goal judge, sorry, the referee Duncan Kelly talking to the goal judge Billy McLaughlin, and I think it's a penalty. Wow. I think he's giving a penalty, I think. Well, I well, well. I think that's well. where this is heading. Well, that's a remarkable sequence of events. Because the way, you notice the way the players have lined up. The players have lined up for a penalty. They know actually. it's a penalty. But you, it's yep. difficult to see why you it's a penalty. You can see there, there's the players. They have to be outside that arc while the player takes the penalty from the 22-meter mark. So they've, they've already accepted it's a penalty. That's quite clearly what they, what they think is happening. And there's the David Stafford is, is on I the think, field. I think Kelly had blown for the penalty. And he, ha he has given a penalty. Yep. That is a penalty. And I think he had blown for the penalty on the first incident here so because it was quite clearly stopping play. Penalty immediately. So Now he has to keep these players Who's outside taking it? that circle. And I would reckon it'd be Donald Lamont, is it? He's taking it. He's lying well back, yes. It looks that's... Well, there's two balls now. Oh, this is like a comedy of errors now. Now he's got a ferocious shot. We saw the first goal. This could be his second. Well... Scott McNeil in goal. Here we go. The penalty. Yes. The goal. What a beautiful penalty. I tell you, that was another wonderful strike. 33 and 78 minutes. Two goals. Donald well, Lamont. How nerveless is this? I wonder. His father told me at halftime that his nerves were shredded at halftime. I wonder how he felt when his son stood up to take that penalty. That's magnificent. It's terrific hit. Look at that. Straight as a die. Straight as a die, Ian. Uh, low and with tremendous velocity. And poor old Scott McNeil, no chance. Two each. Two each. What a build-up. Uh, what have we got? About ten minutes left. It's two each. And Kilmali are back in the hunt. Tell you. Oh, that was a dunt by uh, Levin on McLeod. Silly foul to give away there, that gives Fort William the chance to launch another one. I think the finesse will go out of the window now, Ian. This is going to be pretty direct stuff for the last two or three minutes. Pretty direct, and uh, pretty direct is James Clark's bag, I would have thought. Drew McNeil through to James Clark. Can he turn? Can he hit? Can he make space? Oh, oh, oh. It's a ricochet, I think it's a ricochet, and that might have won the Kamenak Cup. We were talking about James Clark just doing the business. Well, doing the business is what he's done. The president of Fort Williams dancing down below us here. Watch this. This is a good ball in. He didn't quite hit it well, Drew McNeil. But look at the turn again. It's all about the James Clark turn. No chance for the keeper. He wouldn't have seen much of that at the end. But Nickel wasn't that far away. But he was too far away. That's a great goal to win a final. I thought that there might have been a ricochet, but indeed there wasn't. No. Nope. It was a wonderful Stable. strike by the big man. And I tell you, we're talking about route number one direct up the middle. That's what happened. Has that strike won the game for Fort William? What a game it's been. One would not rule it out that Kilmale could come back. Well, there's some very uh, long looks in the Kilmali bench. I'm but afraid that man's so. very pleased. David Stafford, third Towser. time lucky. Towser. Towser, third time lucky. Liam McIntyre, an easy, elegant swing. And they don't mind. They're going to hit it down the field and hit it long. We've played 90 minutes and uh, we're in the injury time. And the cup is within Fort William's grasp. Well, they're all William. to get back. There's the captain, Gary Innes. There's James Clark, who scored that goal. Here's Victor Smith. Oh, he can't get at it. Can James Clark finish it? He very nearly can. Oh, there's also... Oh, is that a corner? No, no, it's not a corner. He got it himself. There is the cup. Fort William are one minute, two minutes away. Can almost touch it. James Clark can almost taste something out of it.
up go Kilmalley Drew McNeil well one side had to win and one had to lose here's strong legs Neil McPhee trying to run out and uh, being tackled by Ross Levin the two number sixes and you just sense in the body language of the Kilmalley side yeah. that they know uh, it's gone I think they know where they are Ian yeah they know it's gone Drew McNeil following through Victor Smith Ooh, nice play flicks it through trying to get Gordon McKinnon James McNichol wants to keep it in play for obvious reasons the whistle goes for full time and the cup belongs to Fort William a fantastic competitive game here at Anaird the final score Kilmalley 2 Fort William 3 and we have, despite the elements, enjoyed a thrilling, thrilling game. That was some match. What does it mean to you? Absolutely everything. Really great in here, but uh, <laughs> uh, worked so hard this year, and I'm just back after an injury, and it's, it's brilliant. But it was nip and tuck all the way, wasn't it, James? It was. Well, they gave us a good game. We knew they always would. Um, I mean, home advantage means nothing in games like this, but the result is luckily our way. You know what it's like to lose, but winning is just, just the ultimate, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I mean, well done to Kamali. I mean, they, they did, they battled right to the end, and a good young team they have there. But it's just on the day, and we were better on the day. And it goes for yourself as well. I mean, to score the Camera Cup final so special too. It is, yeah, it really is. Um, and to get the winner makes it even better. It's really good. Give us some idea about what will be happening later on. <laughs> and who's this? Who's this? My daughter, EVJ. And that's my wee mascot for today. And Maybe a wee bit young to remember, but you can always show the pictures of your goals. Yep, she'll see it all right. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. There is the captain and uh, box player extraordinaire. He's the man of the match, in fact. And the man of the match. And we wouldn't disagree with that, would we? That's Gary Innes. Uh, Rena Smith, Victor Smith's mother, hanging the medal round his neck. That's, uh, that's a good award. are sad at heart, yeah. aren't they? It's never easy to lose at this stage. To say semi-finals are, are uh, quite difficult, but, uh, you know, look at it. It's all written on their faces, Ian. They yeah. don't have to say anything. And, and it's made worse by knowing how close they had got. Yeah. But the penalty went in. Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure it looked like theirs at that point. Uh, we, we said in the commentary that the game had turned. The, the, the tide was definitely flowing in their direction. And it's all to Fort William's credit. You have to say... They did battle away. There was only two minutes left, but who cares? You know, two minutes left is time enough. Number one, Scott McNeil. <laughs> Scott McNeil. He's the, of course, as uh, was on the side in, in 92. Yeah. Adam Robinson was as well. Yep. And uh, Drew and Victor, of course. That's the, the handful who have been through it all. Neil Robertson. His legs are pretty painful tonight. Duncan Roger, he'll be there a few times. You'll see that guy again. There's no doubt about that. And probably this guy too, Neil McPhee. Strong boy. Maybe not Drew. He'll fancy it, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> they are so thrilled. Seamus Clark, Esquire. And Victor. Victor Smith, John McLeod, who went off. There's one of the tall rambers who came on, and the squad. And Graham Yunson of Glenmorangie presenting the prizes, and of course, about to present the cup. Deke Cameron didn't get on this time. Scored the goal in nine seconds in 1992. One nil with Deke Cameron. But the moment has arrived. Gary Innes of Fort William takes the Kavanagh Cup on its 98th edition. Wonderful moment for Fort William. In all sorts of ways. And despite the weather, it has been a memorable final.
Oh, I think so, Ian. I mean, this is um, just another chapter in the very long history. You know, we're heading for the 100th final in another two years. This will go down as one of the better ones. There's no doubt about that at all. The results, in a way, immaterial for William have won it. That's it. It's all history now. But um, the game will go down as one of the better contests. It wasn't uh, for the purists, obviously, given the conditions. But in terms of a fitting finale to the competition, you couldn't have asked for better.